Hey guys, Capper here and welcome back. This is going to be another fun video. Um, today's video is going to be my response to Homestead Howe on what I think is their best piece of equipment for the budget that they're on. Um, but before that, remember, if you enjoy our content, please hit the like button and share our content to help us get out there and grow our channel a little bit more. So getting into today's video, a couple weeks ago, we did a collaboration with Homestead Howe. They've got a 20 acre homestead up in central Wisconsin and they don't have any machines. Um, so they're looking at making a machine purchase and they were kind of wondering what's the best route to go. And their budget is $20,000. That's what they're looking at. So based on uh, my experience over the last 13-ish well, years with various different machines, I'm going to give them my take on what I think is going to be the best overall option and why. Um, as far as our experiences, I'm not a, like an excavator or anything, but we have owned many, many farms over the years because we used to flip them. Currently, I own a 78 horsepower Branson tractor, a Bobcat T650 compact track loader, AKA skid steer track loader, and also a Bobcat mini excavator. We've owned, I think, six tractors over the years, you know, continually kind of upgrading and, and finding things that we liked more in one versus another. Okay, so let's go down Kerry's list from Homestead How um, The main projects that he was looking at were uh, dirt work on the gravel driveway. They've got a very long driveway that needs repair. So they're looking at dirt work on keeping it drained and gravel work. They're looking at firewood work, being able to haul logs out of the woods and process them also looking at general dirt work around the farm and one thing he didn't mention but i know they're going to need and get into is a uh, pto work whether that be planting gardens or food plots tilling bush hogging or whatever so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rate each of the machines the top three machines to me in this choice are the tractor skid steer or mini excavator um, a backhoe is a good multi-purpose unit but it lacks a PTO, which, which really just kind of knocks it out. But it's great for equipment and they're more expensive, but he might be able to find a used one in that price range. So the first job, fixing roads. I'm gonna rank these one to 10 for each of them. I'm gonna just kind of go down the line. You could see whether you agree with me or not and see how we kind of come out in the end. So the first one, fixing roads. The tractor I rate at a six, the skid steer at an eight, the mini excavator at an eight. Um, fixing roads, that could encompass a lot of things. If you're just talking about like the gravel lane that's already created, a tractor can do much better than a six. But if, it, if fixing roads, like in Carrie's case, includes fixing water runoff issues, then it gets a little bit more challenging with the tractor. An example is the road mini series I just put up today as a matter of fact I was out in the woods and it was really really tight spacing and I was able to do that with the mini excavator in very short time a project like that you could do with a tractor but it would be very very challenging um, the digging and the grading especially when you're in tight spaces like that because you could see with a mini excavator you could be facing you know, your tracks one way and digging off to the side. Whereas a tractor, you have to be digging obviously forward. So it could be done, but it would take a lot longer and be a lot more challenging in the tractor. Uh, the second one is dirt work in general. Um, again, the tractor rates at about a six. The track loader is a 10 and the mini excavator is a 10. I mean, their initial designs, the track loader and the uh, mini excavator, they're made to move dirt. They're both tracked machines and they have good traction and they can haul a large volume of dirt. Uh, the tractor is more of a jack of all trades, but it can do a lot of this stuff. So the dirt work is a six. The next one, firewood for the tractor. I give the tractor a seven, the uh, skid steer a 10, and the mini excavator a two. 
There again, you could have a grapple bucket on a tractor or a skid steer. The skid steer is just a lot more maneuverable in them tight spaces in the woods as opposed to the tractor. And then of course, we're gonna get the traction here in a little bit. Uh, the next one, which Kerry didn't bring up, but he's gonna need to consider is planting. Because I'm sure they're gonna be doing larger gardens at some point, maybe some kind of cash crop or food plot or something. So for planting, the tractor gets a 10. The uh, skid steer gets a two, and the mini excavator gets a zero for basically obvious reasons. Um, tilling and soil preparation. There again, the tractor gets a 10. The skid steer gets a six, and the mini gets another zero for uh, soil preparation. I mean, he's gonna get into soil preparation, even though he isn't now especially if he gets the right machine he's definitely going to want to expand into some kind of planting there's no doubt in my mind about that all right the next category is heavy moving um, like hay bales firewood you know heavy things around the farm tractor gets a six skid steer gets a 10 and the mini excavator gets a three um, there again the reason for the tractor getting a six and the skid steer getting a 10 is skid steer can handle more weight than a tractor and it's way more nimble than a tractor. Um, you know, even if you get a compact tractor, I'll, I'll see if I could find a video of turning around, but I mean, you need a pretty substantial radius to turn a tractor around as opposed to a skid steer where you can literally spin from forward to reverse in the same footprint. Uh, the next category is gravel work, which he'll have a lot of gravel work there on his road. I give the tractor a seven, uh, the skid steer a nine, and the mini excavator a two. And I know a lot of tractor guys are gonna say, oh, the tractor should be a 10 or whatever, but based on my experiences of using all three, the skid steer there again, this is what it's built for. Um, so the grading, and the moving of gravel much faster is just why it's gonna get a, a nine as opposed to the tractor getting a seven. You can grade with the tractor with a box blade, a back blade, a four in one bucket on the front or just a regular bucket on the front. So there's different ways of doing gravel work with a tractor, but it's just not as fast as let's say a skid steer would be, but it definitely can handle gravel work. Okay, the next category is tight space maneuverability. The tractor gets a six, and both the skid steer and the mini excavator get a 10. I kind of mentioned it, but turning around a tractor takes space, whether you're inside of a building or if you're in a barn stall, you know, or in the woods with trees where you can't get around, it does make a difference, um, that maneuverability. Uh, wet traction. The uh, tractor with ag tires gets a seven, the skid steer gets a nine, and the mini excavator gets a 10. Now, the mini excavator, you've got the boom, which can help you in tight spaces get yourself out. Wow, well, a little mushy there. That's the uh, part that I repaired. as opposed to a uh, skid steer or the tractor. Yes, they each have a loader where you can kind of back yourself out, but it, it has its limitations. But a tractor with, ag with uh, R4 tires, um, AKA industrial tires, or a quasi, they've got new ones. They're kind of turf tires, but they're not, but they're kind of a crossbreed. I give it a four, the tractor, a number four, if it doesn't have ag tires for traction and wet junk. Some people might argue with me, and but again, the ag tires do make a huge difference. Having had both now for quite some time, it does make a giant difference. And of course, four-wheel drive for a tractor, that's just a must. There's just, in my opinion, on a farm, you, you just have to have four-wheel drive on a tractor, aka front-wheel assist. Now the cost, 
this is what's going to boil everything down. They want to try and hit a $20,000 budget, which depending on how many headaches you want in the future and that stuff um, may be obtainable. But as far as the ratings go, the tractor is going to be a nine, the skid steer a three, and the mini a three. Obviously, those two are much more expensive. What I think they should be looking for is a tractor, but I'm not going to really lay out minimums or maximums as far as size. I've always suggested to people to buy as much horsepower as you can because believe me, you find times when you wish you had 10 more horsepower or 15. Um, we do have Megatron 2.0, which is our Branson Rehab Tractor that I have toyed with selling that. Um, that could be a possibility, Carrie, for you guys over there at Homestead How. It would be, I could make a really good package deal with several implements, which those add up the cost as well. That's a 65 horse, I think it's a 2009. It's got the cab, heat, air, radio, everything. Um, and I also have found a tractor through uh, pricing with one of our friends. Now this is interesting because when you start talking used to new budget, I could help get you into a 40 horsepower Branson brand new shuttle shift cab with heat, air, and everything. And it comes with a free loader for under 26,000. Um, and that, and it's brand new and that's a 40 horse. I mean, I'd like to see you in more of a 60, 50 to 60 horse range. But that 40 will do everything that you would need it to do. And it would be brand new with a, whatever the warranty comes. Three, four years, I'm not even sure. Um, the reason that I'm not recommending a skid steer is because it's a great machine. Don't get me wrong. But if you're ever going to do anything with a PTO, you need a tractor. Now, the skid steer, you can rent pretty much everything you could do with a tractor. So you could rent a power tiller to work up gardens and stuff. You could rent a soil conditioner to do gravel and, and fine dirt work. Um, you know, I just did tested mine out on a new food plot area. Um, I mean, you could rent stump grinders, you could rent sweepers, you could rent all kinds of attachments for the skid steer. But remember, we're talking cost here also. And the tractor implements are a lot cheaper to buy than skid steer implements. So yes, you could try to get a fleet of skid steer implements, but they're gonna cost a lot more. Um, I mean, if cost was no issue, I'd probably say you're gonna get more use out of the skid steer because it sounds like he's gonna be doing mostly gravel work and firewood work in that. But if the majority of his work was planting, then I'm gonna say a tractor. You know, if you're planting acreage, you know, whatever, two, five, ten acres every year, much like we do here, the tractor is going to beat the skid steer hands down on any kind of planting. They do have a skid steer planter, um, but it's, it's not a no-till. It's basically a gravity, gravity planter. So you can still plant with a skid steer, but the tractor is just going to be hands down much better. A couple other things I want to mention. Um, like I said earlier, the backhoe is a great utility vehicle, but without a PTO on it, it, it just loses. It's, it's slower than an excavator. It's slower than a skid steer on getting the dirt work done, but you can do more volume with it. Um, with a tractor, you can also get a backhoe attachment. Fairly reasonable. Will it replace a mini excavator? No, not even close but it will dig trench lines and it will do some tight spacing digging like I always do in the excavator. Not quite as good, but it will still do it. So that's why the tractor is just a jack of all trades. Um, so my recommendation is a tractor, 40 to 60-ish horsepower, and your main implements you're looking at is one implement to till dirt. I recommend a power tiller and not a disc. It's just, it's way better than a disc. You want to plant. You're not into planting yet, but at some point you'll be able to plant. Um, you want to grade dirt, so basically just a bucket or a four-in-one bucket, and you want a box blade and or a back blade. A 
box blade can pretty much do everything you need so you only need that really and a grapple you'll definitely need a grapple for uh, your firewood work and being out in the brush so uh, i wish the best of luck to homestead how on on researching and trying to find a machine don't forget to uh hit the like button if you enjoy our content and go visit homestead how at their channel They've got some interesting stuff going on and I enjoy following them and we're looking, I'm actually going to bring hopefully a machine up to their farm very soon when spring breaks. We're going to work on some of these projects and do a little bit of collaborating. So that should be really fun. So once again, thanks for joining us. We appreciate everybody being on board and I'll catch you on the next go around. Thanks.